So my name is Charlie Kim, CEO and founder of NextJump. Um, the company's been built over 16 years, 15 years of it, quietly. The basic premise of our business is we get the consumers on a B2B basis, we work with merchants to redirect their ad spend towards better pricing in the form of discount deals and points. Here's where it gets interesting. We grew really big over the 16-year window, and we did that by never competing with our B2B partners, never competing with merchants. We are a trusted partner in all sides of the business. And our goal is to be the intel inside of shopping for all our partners we work with. The technology comes in two forms, the consumer-facing interface and the merchant interface. Many consider us to be the Match.com for shopping. If Match.com ever built technology where it's only geared to one side of the business, say men only, it would never work. You really need two sides. At the core of the technology is building a system that really listens to what consumers are asking for. Even if you get a single data point on what a user wants, if I want red envelope at 20%, that's what we serve up to the consumer. And of course, the recommendation engine finds similar as well as related items. Another key theme is real-time consumer guides. guides. What we call is data exhaust, taking the data, what is most popular in the last 24 hours. Lotions and moisturizers for women, um, power toothbrushes and deodorants for men. Another key theme is social shopping, measuring and rewarding social capital. Who is the most influential when it comes to shopping? If you're the mayor of a merchant, you actually write better reviews and you have more followers, you get special pricing for you and your followers. And of course, on the internet, there's no pride in authorship. If something works well, make it better. Now, when you work with as much data as we do, inevitably, privacy is always a hot topic. The only place you will ever see individual level transaction detail is right here, me seeing my own transactions, my own usage. And that, by definition, of course, is not spam. We also have a lot of technology creating real-time um, interfaces for merchants, real-time user demand. Who is in market to buy at what price point? When I talked about red envelope, 20%, I'm interested in a purchase there. Merchants have the ability to fulfill that demand in real time. Other aspects of the merchant interface, conversion rates. Um, conversion days, not all days are equal. You will find that some days convert better than others. If a marketer has $365,000 in a marketing budget, rather than spending 1000 a day, concentrate the majority of it in less than 10% of the year, 24 days. Lifetime value of the customer, not all customers are equal. Names and faces are actually not real, but the data underlying is real, and the most profitable individual, give them a $200 pair of earrings for free, it's worthwhile. That, in a nutshell, is NextJump's business. I started the company when I was 20 years old. We grew to 150 employees, shrunk down to four, and I can tell you, we did almost everything wrong imaginable. Learned a lot of lessons, battle scars, and for those of you here who are entrepreneurs, want to share a couple key lessons and insights to help you build your business. So insight number one in e-commerce. Less is more. More is not better. When I was in high school, I wanted to date as many girls as possible. Eventually, as you mature, you look for that one special person. E-commerce is still in its infant stage. And anything that is immature starts off by just wanting more. More is definitely not better. This picture speaks for itself. And by the way, women do more of the shopping. Now, in fact, 90% of spend is either done by or influenced by women. If you're building a startup, hire female engineers. More really is not better. When my wife sends me to the grocery store to buy milk, I always get it wrong. The sheer number of choices that are out there, it's overwhelming. Providing six million choices to a consumer is a demonstration of how powerful a computer is. It's not intelligence. Simple is intelligent. Users want three to six of the most relevant choices. If I go to a concierge service and ask for restaurant recommendations, when they give me three to six recommendations, that's what I want, not six million thrown at me. So insight number two. When you use data, don't use data to guess. Data can cut two ways. If you use the data correctly, you can better the consumer experience and build trust with them. When you don't, you will surely lose trust. Now, a lot of businesses do not actually have data or the capabilities, and when they don't, they will always spam. And spam, by, by definition, is unwanted advertising. It comes in all shapes and sizes today. And trust me that no individual ever woke up in the morning saying, I can't wait to see an ad today. Nobody wants advertising. They don't want to see it. Now, businesses that have a lot of data, they go into the guessing game. A fancy word for it is predictive modeling. Using data to guess what a consumer wants next, that is something if you do badly, you spam. When you do well, you always run into one key problem eventually as you get better. 
and that problem is privacy breach. It's spooky to track what a user is doing and spend. It's spooky to track what a user is doing through click streams and then putting billboards, banner ads, email notifications, mobile notifications in front of the user. It's the fastest way to lose trust. What we have found that the best way to describe our business is a Seinfeld episode called a movie phone, where Kramer mixed phone numbers and movie phone. People dial his number, and so he will say, "Welcome to movie phone. Press one if you want to see. Press two. After many frustrating guesses, he simply says, "Why don't you just tell me what you want to see?" That's how we built our business. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you here.、Um, I am Jen Beckman, and I'm here to talk about 20 by 200. Uh, 20 by 200 is.、Um, I'm an art dealer, and I'm also a web nerd. 20 by 200 is a marriage of being a web nerd and、uh, an art dealer, and it's founded on the premise that everybody should collect art. Everyone here can be an art collector.、Uh, the, the the way that we try to get you into that is we say that we offer great art for $20. Really, why really? It's kind of hard to believe that you can buy good art for $20, but、uh, we figured out a way to do it.、Uh, people didn't believe me when I started the site that it would be possible, but、uh, we do offer great art for $20, bucks, and it's quite an alternative to what. People normally think of when they think of a gallery.、Uh, galleries are intimidating. They're cold.、Uh, they're just—they're、uh, really opaque. And 20 by 200 is totally transparent. 20 by 200 is about education. It's about addressing all your baggage that you have about art and collecting. Most people think collecting isn't for them. It's not something they can do. It's impenetrable. And、uh, you know, it's a hard—it's a hard thing. Like galleries don't really do much to educate people, and there's not a lot on, online about it to date. Uh, what, what I discovered when I combined my experience with the gallery with the internet is that the internet, as this great connector of different audiences, was a great way to connect、um, artists with collectors, old collectors, new collectors.、Um, you, you can go to art.com right now and see a lot of stuff on art.com,、uh, and there's a lot to see there. There's too much to see there,、um, and as you saw in the earlier presentation,、uh, the fact is that more is more. Uh, we did not plan this.、Um, I have 20 slides. He has 20 slides. We picked the same image. This is a Andreas Gursky photo, by the way.、Um, and the reason it's there is because it really is a great expression of the problem of the internet、um, and what you often end up with when you have too much to choose from, which is something that's familiar and something that's not really that special. I mean, I'm a dog fan, and I'm actually kind of fond of this. Painting because it, it is kind of iconic, but I don't necessarily want to live with it, and it certainly doesn't turn you into a collector, which is you know what gets me out of bed in the morning.、Uh, we take this approach that customers should be connoisseurs, and that we can educate them、uh, and help them kind of get there.、Uh, 20 by 200 is often described to us as the gateway drug of the art world.、Um, Uh, I sometimes get in trouble for this, but、uh, <laughs> but actually, you know, the the whole premise is for 20 bucks you can try something. It's pretty low risk,、um, and you know we we try to give you a great experience and show you the path upwards.、Uh, and you know, so what you see here is like our eight by ten print and all the way up to the 40 by 50 range that we have.、Uh, you know, it's great to be able to offer 20 dollar prints because it means that anybody can buy something from us, but it also means. You know, we want people to move up the ladder.、Uh, the ways that we do that is we give you sort of a simple curated site. When you go to the homepage, you're presented with one main image, perhaps two images.、Um, it's curated. It's subjective. It is、um, hopefully it's challenging, and hopefully it's something that you're going to engage in, whether you buy something or not. And we really think about it as an experience. We think about、uh, not so much the, the single transaction as much as the idea that you can.、Um, You can by looking at what we present to you, whether you like it or not.、Um, not liking something is a great way to figure out what you do like.、Um, this is one of our newsletters. You'll notice that it's long. It doesn't have big headlines.、Um, we use a lot of words. Sometimes we use big words,、um, and we sort of challenge you and expect that you know you're invested and you're smart. And then we think about the whole experience.、Um, One of the frustrations that I have with a lot of e-commerce sites is they think a lot about the website, they think a lot about customer service, they have 24/7 phone support, there's Twitter and you know everything, but the package that you get in the mail is kind of nondescript. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten something that I've ordered online and it's like chucked at my doorstep, and the packaging is terrible and it doesn't feel special. Our packaging is special,、um, it's thoughtful. We've thought about you know every step of it and. It's、uh, it's resulted in happy customers, which,、uh, as I'm sure many of you know, is the best marketing that you could have. All of our growth for the site、um, has been organic.、Uh, 
uh, and it's, uh, it's been organic, sort of based on people like this. This is a, a collector who bought a print, a $50 print, and she found a $3 frame. She spray painted the frame, she made a mat, she like went whole hog to like put it together. It looks gorgeous. She posted about it. We sent, her, uh, we sent her a thank you after she posted about it. It was pretty easy. She was pretty psyched um, <laughs> to get a tote bag and some stickers and all of it, which is branding for us, um, that she was really happy to get. Uh, and, you know, she, uh, she, you know, her experience and her ability to kind of broadcast her satisfaction with the experience has been, like, that's the best advertising that you could possibly have. Um, this is a, you know, that's the end of my talk. But... Live with art, it's good for you. Thank you. All right. Hi, my name is Rebecca Thorman, and I manage the PR and community at Alice.com. We saw something incredibly exciting, but first I want to tell you how we came into business. Our CEO and now VP of Business Development were in Australia in a beautiful fishing village when the conversation turned to, as it often does with you guys, toilet paper. And they asked, why doesn't anybody buy toilet paper online when you could do buy things like shoes, which you need to try on and inspect, but with household essentials, not so much. And they came up with several reasons. For starters, Shipping. Nobody wants to pay $6 shipping on a $3 tube of toothpaste. And prices. Before Alice.com, it was 20 to 40% more to buy household essentials online um, than at your local big box store. And so the Alice.com service responds with always free shipping, great prices, and a Netflix-like reorder queue. So when you're sitting on the toilet and you're out of toilet paper, it's not too late. We've reminded you when you're running low. If you're thinking this sounds too good to be true, you probably don't know our co-founders. They're coming up here, Brian Wiegand and Mark McGuire. They have three successful startups under their belt already, and so they knew that you couldn't sell household essentials as a traditional retailer. Walmart has already won that game. And so they knew they had to change the rules. And so a common theme in their previous startups was disintermediation. And so true to form, Alice.com eliminates that retail middleman and allows the people that make the goods to sell directly to the people that buy the goods. And talking fast. So we don't, we're not a traditional retailer, and we don't make money off the retail margin. Instead, a lot like Orbitz is a consortium of airlines coming together to sell directly to the consumer. Alice is a marketplace of CPG manufacturers, allowing them to sell directly to the consumer as well online. That's a huge trend. Callaway and Nike can sell their golf clubs and shoes because the consumer is willing to make that single store shopping trip. They want to have that standalone experience. But to date, there hasn't been a workable e-commerce solution for CPG manufacturers because consumers aren't willing to go to detergent.com and bathtissue.com, 10 different carts, checkouts, shipping fees, and boxes delivered to your house, you wouldn't go to 10 stores in real life, and you're not going to do that online. So our solution then is the shared industry cart, which allows the manufacturers to come together and work together to reach the consumer. Manufacturers also have the ability through the Alice.com platform to create storefronts, coming up here, <laughs> that are customized in their branded look and feel, as you can see at Gerber.com, but share the Alice.com checkout and fulfillment process. We also have a great iPhone app that continues to extend that relationship between the brand and the consumer. And the reason that manufacturers need these platforms like the iPhone app and the storefronts and the Alice.com site is because retailers have traditionally held on to the relationship between the brand, or I'm sorry, the manufacturer and the consumer and all of the data that is associated with that. As a result, uh, manufacturers are turning to the Alice.com platform so they can have access to that rich set of data now for free and they can diversify their revenue, they can optimize their digital advertising and marketing dollars and also act as a learning lab to support that retail channel. So how does this all work then? Manufacturers list products on the Alice.com marketplace and we charge a listing fee when that product sells. They set the price and they get the profit. The great thing about this is when manufacturers are able to you know, set the price and get the retail profit, they can set really affordable prices and they can pay for free shipping. And so that's the magic of the marketplace. The value is transferred back to the customer. So you're probably wondering, OK, OK, but how do you make money? And we make money as an advertising platform, but don't, don't get nervous yet. Um, so we have value-added, kind of targeted advertising uh, 
opportunities that we offer to the manufacturers for the customer. But I'm not talking about banners, buttons, and badges, but rather things like couponing, loyalty programs, sampling, um, really things that consumers want and save money. So every time the consumer saves money on the Alice platform, Alice.com makes money, which is a great position to be in. To date, there are more than 185 manufacturers onboarded onto the Alice platform, and a number of those from Fortune 500 companies all the way to the long tail manufacturers are using the Alice platform to uh, power their storefronts as well. We're only just getting started, so I hope you guys will visit me at 1.30 today in room 2002, a little plug, um, and we're going to talk about social media and how that's laid the foundation for our success, and uh, we have no advertising budget and a very small marketing budget and have um, a tremendous uh, response rate. So thank you so much. I appreciate it.